Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So this is episode 2 of Kobe's baby journey and so I thought in this video I will talk about what I've learned in the first week of having a newborn baby. Obviously there's a lot of things for you know for a new mom to actually experience through but this is what I find the most five essential things that I've learned within that one week. So yeah, let's get started. The first one would be breastfeeding and I think this is like a lot of this this is a big topic here. If you guys want me to do like a separate video, feel free to let me know. But I just I'll try and squeeze as much info as I can. And breastfeeding is hard guys. Like it's there's a whole process to go through and I didn't realize there was because we went and did antenatal class to learn more info and stuff, but it didn't tell us how breast milk gets produced you know and so it's the whole like there's colostrum which you can try and express before the baby arrives but also colostrum happens first before the breast milk comes in and that takes about like two or three days of after giving birth and so the whole time the baby was just trying to let onto your boobs that's the first one trying to you know get to know your nipple and then trying to just activate the breast milk and before they activate it that colostrum comes in and that's what they feed on and I did not know that. I did not know that the breast milk come right after. Like I thought it just comes straight away. But yeah, so it's a whole process of that. And so once between the colostrum and the breast milk comes in, this is where they say that day two and day three of having the baby will get really hard during the night because all they want to do is just feed, 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 feed because they are just trying to activate the breast milk. And this is where you start having like broken sleep or like this is what they call cluster feeding where the baby will try to feed, 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 sleep for like a few minutes and then feed, 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 feed and then sleep for a few minutes and they recommend to actually sleep during the day which is really hard because I couldn't do that like daytime I'm like what awake I feel very energetic and then you feel run down at night and it's really like too late to actually rest and this is yeah but we managed to pull through like day two Kobe was really good day three this is where we felt it and we felt like it was like a delay process and that lasted for like a day rather than two days for us and my breast milk actually came in at the end of day three which is really great but it's the whole process is like mentally and physically draining like tiring because you know, like your newborn, your new mom. You're trying to heal. You're trying to recover, but also you're trying to make sure that you feed your baby enough. And this is where this time period. This is where the baby start losing weight because obviously it came out from your womb and is trying to find a, another source of place to get the food. And this is where my baby lost a lot of weight. So this is my number two point. He lost so much weight that he was told to like try and gain as much back as possible and I just have to continue feeding. I got a little bit upset as well hearing that because you know as a mother it's so painful to hear that he's lost more than he was supposed to but at least now he's gaining back a little bit more and hopefully he hits his target tomorrow when the midwife come and check him but so far he's doing really well because the breast milk has come through. Number three point for me is the whole jaundice thing and so jaundice is really common for babies and apparently really common for asian babies as well and also for those who have type blood zero r uh, o which is me and so kobe started having jaundice on day two yeah he started having jaundice on day two and i think i was really upset as well because again it's the whole feeding as well so in order to remove jaundice we need to make sure that he gets sun bathed quite often during the day and lately the weather here hasn't been the best best it's like raining and stuff so it's just trying to get the light but also at the same time continuously feeding him lots and lots and lots and it's like as a new mother it's so hard to know what is lots of milk you know like for me it's like okay he's feed off me like 10 minutes 10 minutes is that enough? 15, 15, is that enough? Like, what is the right amount? And it's so hard to tell because apparently baby Kobe is actually really tiny. He's only, when he was born, he was actually 3.08, but he dropped down to 2.7. So he lost 300 gram and apparently it's quite a lot. And so he's trying to gain that back. And because he's very little, his tummy is so small. And so there's only so much he can accumulate 
at that amount of time and so it's just feeding let him rest for a bit and then feed let him rest for a bit and so it's just not knowing how long or how much i'm supposed to feed because obviously you can't tell how much he's been drinking so it's just that whole process and just that mental you know thinking about like am i feeding my baby enough is actually quite sad and just hearing about the whole jaundice even though you know it's common but yeah it may take up to like two weeks for the jaundice to disappear but apparently he is doing well so yeah it's so hard to tell with asian baby because they're asian and they already have yellow skin so it's like how you know if a baby has jaundice you know but luckily my midwife is spot on and she can see it so we're still trying to figure that out and the last one is more on just emotional and like your hormones like your pregnancy hormones you think that your hormones is bad like during pregnancy i honestly feel like after giving birth the hormones is actually worse okay like you get way more emotional um just over little stuff like you just overthink every single thing and it just gets to you and so i can see why it's so important for mom to be okay because if not that's where you know the depression comes through and fingers crossed i don't get it but we'll see what happens but it's just yeah and i think that's why it happens it's so common for people because you know you got this all this pregnancy hormones you're feeling very emotional in terms of everything and it's just you know just making sure that you are mentally looking after yourself as well and this is where it's really important to have you know the partner supporting you and my husband has been really good like you know he can see when i'm tired or when i'm not myself and told me to just go rest and he will just look after kobe and it's just yeah it's just really really important and i just find that this is actually very crucial as well because you have to be healthy in order to be healthy for the baby as well because you know you're trying to look after another human being the last one is the poo and the pee amount i didn't know how much a baby would poo and pee when i did my antenatal class um they actually did give us like a chart of like okay day one you expect this day two you expect this day three you expect this but like oh my god like you just have to like keep track of it for i think for the first 10 days and so I find this app, I will put it down below, Huckleberry, and that app is life-saving because I know like you honestly have to like continuously like recording because when the midwife asks you like, okay, how much poo or pee he has done for the last 24 hours, you can't really remember on the top of your head. So it's very easier to actually download on the app and then both you and your husband can like have it and then it actually sync into one account. And I find that really helpful because that's where I could see that, okay, Kobe hasn't done much. So he actually didn't, did, he actually didn't do enough wee on the first um, day two and day three. So that's when he had the colostrum because I don't think I had enough colostrum. But once the breast milk came through, he was like a poop machine. Like he was pooping. There was one point he was doing 10 poos in that 24 hours. It was crazy. But apparently as a baby, it's really normal for them to do between 8 to 12, I think. And so far he's heating like the 8 or the 10 between that. And which is really good because it's just like releasing everything and then i've learned about the whole transition of the poo start off as black then brown green and then yellow to yellow cd like this there's a reason for that and so luckily kobe managed to like hit all those goals which is really good but again i did not learn the whole process of that the whole pee and the importance of how much pee Kobe had to pee out because Kobe actually got a urine infection the first two days as well because he didn't pee enough and his pee was really red and yeah but the more breast milk you give the faster it clears out and again it just goes back to the whole breast milk and stuff and how important it is to actually breastfeed the baby continuously in that first week for them you know to have the nutrition that they need and yeah these are so so important so those are the five things i've learned in my first week with my baby i hope you guys enjoy it and you know feel free to comment down below if you're new mamas about things that you have learned as well because i would love to know and i'll see you guys on my next video bye guys